we are repitching our culture and we have never purified it and uh, it's not it's not a acidic culture it's not a souring culture but it is a culture that you work with that you change with, and you deal with the limitation and um I guess that's the interesting part where, I mean, what we're talking about, I guess, with these wild elves, there's this reappreciation for them because it's a different way of working with beer, away from a kind of rationalized science te technical sense towards a more direct, I guess, artisan is often used, like a more direct approach as we repitching our yeast. We have a fairly good idea how it behaves, but we don't particularly know what it is. And um, we know it behaves different at different temperatures and different parts of the year. Um, we have open fermenters. And I think it's a very classic understanding that uh, we harvest our yeast at a very specific moment, visually and within, let's say, uh, like 12, 14 or 20 hours, exactly at the same moment again and again and again in the fermentation. And it's a very simple technique to make sure that your culture stays consistent. Hey, I think that's probably what Tom and Matthias both saying also is kind of bringing back these techniques and that knowledge also into a modern day beer making, because I guess that's all our base understandings. We didn't start making beer uh, taught by our grandparents on the farm. Most of us either looked at brewing books first or home brewing. So, um, so in that sense, this, this separation between pure and uh, wild yeast cultures I think it's a bit misleading, but yeah, our yeast, I think it's probably multi, multi strain culture. Um, and it has somehow found uh, a synergy that it creates something interesting. And we found a way to keep that synergy over multiple batches or multiple years.